Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Kazimir, um, and I am from Macmillan Education. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for being here this afternoon um, for this penultimate uh, English Wednesdays. Um, I'd also like to thank my colleagues at Mondadori uh, for, for helping us uh, make this possible. And then lastly, I'd like to thank my colleague, Teresa Dowelli, um, who will be joining us now. And she would like to speak about Agenda 2030. Um, so we don't have more than an hour, so I'll let her get to it. I just would like to remind everyone that um, we'll try to answer any big questions in the final five minutes. Teresa might be able to follow questions as she's presenting, but should anything be missed, we'll try to take care of that in the final, final five minutes. So Teresa, over to you. Thank you. Um, also, I'll be asking you to interact with me. I'll be asking you questions at some certain points in the presentation. I'd be really happy if you would answer me, guys. Um, I'm not going to ask you to write very much, but just um, the occasional question and the occasional answers so we can have a little mini dialogue as we go along. So. Um, Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to look at On the Road to Agenda 2030 with Z-Gen, the Z-Generation that we all teach, and how language learning can change the world. Isn't that an amazing ambition? Um, we're going to look at how we can help our learners change the world through our English language classes. Um, in this webinar today. So, um, first thing we'll need to do is um, check on our own awareness of what Agenda 2030 is. Um, also, similarly with learners, possibly, probably, many of them will not have heard about Agenda 2030. And so, um, this is an act, a little picture that um, you can share with them too and just ask them. So Agenda 2030, look at the pictures. What do you think it's about? Um, and I'm going to ask you to, to just write a few words in the chat box now. Um, what, what do you see? Who do you think is affected? Um, who does or what is Agenda 2030 aimed at? What do these pictures mean to you? So uh, if you'd like to write it in the in the comments box, I'm looking to see now if yes, um, Ricardo, thank you. He started the ball rolling. So, great, lovely. So we've got integration, acceptance, climate change, environment. Together we can change the world. Nice one. Environmental problems, inclusion. Yes, they're all there in that picture. Lovely. Thank you so much. We've got a great dialogue going. Thank you, Old Eagle. Love for everyone. Daniela, no difference. Solidarity. Thinking green. Absolutely. Hope. Lovely. Thank you so much. So, as I said, that could be an awareness raising activity for your students, too. Um, and the next awareness raising activity could be one like this. So uh, giving them the symbols. Um, but let's say you've got two of them are still here, but uh, the others I've, I've blanked out. There are how many? are there, get students to count up how many there are and get students to, to guess what the sustainable development goals of Agenda 2030 are. So just look at interpreting pictures, visual literacy, something we might do in any lesson. Um, and you've already mentioned a lot of those. Um, you could go straight into this one. Um, show them the pictures, get them to guess what the sustainable development goals are of Agenda 2030. How many are there all together? Can you? Yes, indeed, 17. And then we can show them um, the all 17. And which one 
is very pertinent to us today. Ladies and gentlemen, which number is the one that we are going to be focusing on the most? Well, thank you. <laughs> number number seven is a great one. But yeah, above all, I think number four is the one that applies to us. Quality education, and that's what we're going to look at, how we can help raise students' awareness, maybe get them thinking about, maybe doing something about the other 16 as well through through quality education. So, um, as you're aware, um, in 2019, the UN, the Secretary General, called on all sectors of society to mobilize for action towards this Agenda 2030. He called for global action. He called for local action and above all, people action, including by youth. And that's why I've put them in different colors there, because um, without youth, uh, we can't. We need everybody. We need absolutely everybody to to try and achieve these goals. I, if you read up about it, if you've been reading up about it recently, you'll know we're a little behind. It's going a little bit slowly, um, but that's why we as teachers need to also encourage more and more of our students to get involved. If I move on to the next slide now, yeah, um, as you know, UNESCO, the, uh, the Special Agency for Education, is entrusted with leading and coordinating the Education 2030 Agenda. And they've got a lot of materials online, if we look up in UNESCO, to help us as teachers to uh, ensure that our students' awareness about these goals is heightened. They um, give us a lot of guidelines and help with this, um, not only to help children all over the world get a, an inclusive and equitable quality education, but also promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. And we can see here um, one of the very famous young people who has been uh, very active in the last few years. Um, and education was involved. So moving on. Um, lovely quotation here from Anita Roddick, the founder of The Body Shop. You're all familiar with The Body Shop, the nice smelly place. Um, she wrote, if you think you are too small to have an impact, try going to bed with a mosquito in the room. Lovely quotation there, which, you know, we all kind of think, well, you know, what impact can I have on world change and world improvement? Well, I think that's a lovely quotation that uh, really makes us think, yes, I can have an impact. And Greta Thunberg herself um, said, and this comes from one of our course books, um, she said, I've learned you are never too small to make a difference. So that comes from Gateway to Success as a whole. Lots of information about Greta. And um, that's a very nice motivating quotation from her there. Okay, so sorry, I seem to have skipped uh, a slide. However, if I, tr never mind, no problem. We're talking about Greta is. Uh, one of Generation Z, we're linking this whole um, Agenda 2030 with Generation Z today. So we've got some famous uh, Z Gen young people up there. Uh, I don't know if you recognize any of them. If you do recognize any of them, would you like to put it in the comments box? Any that you recognize at all? It is a motivating quantity, uh, quotation, Giovanna, yes. 
any any of those that you recognize there must be at least one if not two that you might recognize yes it is indeed okay so she's probably together greta and malala are probably the best known but um if you uh, ask your students to research uh, young activists, teenage activists, Generation Z activists, they will also be able to perhaps find other examples as I've given here. So we can see this is uh, Malala, as you identified correctly, um, born in 1997 in Pakistan. We've got Jalen Arnold here from the USA. We've got Luca Riccio here, born in the USA, uh, Bindi Irwin from Australia, Elif Bilgin from Turkey, and Kelvin, Kelvin Doe from Sierra Leone. A couple of questions here, which um, uh, for you today, but it could also be for your students um, to get them going, to get the ball rolling. So which one is Italian by descent? And you'll probably recognize that one by the name. Um, the next question is, which one received the Nobel Peace Prize? I'm sure you're aware. Yes, so Luca, Luca Riccio is of Italian descent and he uh, created a special mask with a microphone um, which to help his grandmother when she was very, very ill in hospital and which will also be very, very useful today. He's still getting it patented. Um, the Nobel Peace Prize was Malala, yes. Um, a huge, made a huge difference to the planet with uh, banana skins. Yes, you've got Elif there and you've got the bananas in the picture to, to help. Um, which one makes generators and batteries out of trash? Again, you can use students' visual literacy to pick up the clues. So generators and batteries. Yeah. And the last one, which one got the Princess Diana Legacy Award for philanthropy? Again, the clues are in the pictures. So, yes. N Kelvin, yes, Kelvin makes generators and batteries out of trash, amongst other things. Um, and Jalen is the one. You can see him pictured here between the two royal British, uh, British royal princes, Harry and William. And he's getting the Princess Diana Legacy Award. What did they get it? Well, what did he get it for? We'll see on the next slide. He um, launched a, a big campaign, first of all, at his school, and then this started to spread around the world, um, anti-bullying. Malala, um, as you know, got the, um, the Peace Prize for campaigning for education for girls, and she was shot in the process. Um, I think she's now in the UK. Um, Elif, from the country where... I am currently um, created banana skins um, into bioplastic. Bindi Irwin, I don't know if you remember Steve Irwin, who was a conservationist and used to fight crocodiles and, um, or not fight, but try, pick them up and cuddle them and hug them. He used to love animals. And this is his daughter who's continued his legacy. Um, and we've talked about the other two. So again, this is um, both a motivational activity that you can introduce the subject through and, and showing that, you know, little mosquitoes can have a huge impact on the world and that our students shouldn't underestimate themselves. Let's move to the next slide now. A um, little bit of information um, about the, the Z generation. Um, yet yeah, we know that they're very digitally smart. Um, they've never experienced a world without the internet. 
but um, they believe in working with all kinds of generations. Um, they are very much a generation that likes to work together cooperatively with all generations and they they like to do things that change the world one of the reasons that a lot of uh z generation are a dream of being youtubers is because they want to be influencers they want to improve change do something new for the world um and they they are concerned with social, political, and environmental issues, and they're not afraid to to do something about them. So we've got a fantastic generation here in our hands. So why not encourage them in these endeavors? So really, we're talking about um, introducing global citizenship education into our English language teaching um, curriculum. We're thinking about three kind of main areas or two main areas. One is giving students knowledge about the goals of Agenda 2030, um, those 17 goals. But we're also going to try and raise or change raise their awareness, change their attitudes, develop their attitudes to the different problems that exist in their community, all around them, in their home, outside their home, in their city, in their country, and then beyond maybe to other countries and the rest of the world. Um, so, and not only attitudes, but also try and get them involved in action. So global citizenship is knowledge, attitudes, and action. Um, and all of those will be developing and including students' communication skills, their collaboration skills, their creative skills, and their questioning skills. So let's have a look at how we can work on this. Now, the first question which you may have in your mind as you watch this, very often, uh, many people might be thinking, but I'm an English language teacher. Um, I'm not here to teach civic education or global citizenship education. I'm an English language teacher. Quite right. Yes, you are. However, we're not talking here about anything additional to what you always do. We're talking about the topics. We have lots and lots of topics. When we're teaching English, we teach through all kinds of topics. Um, so we're just talking about adjusting those topics. Um, so they'll still be working on their vocabulary. They'll still be working on their grammar. They'll still be working on pronunciation. They'll still be developing their four main reading, writing, listening, speaking skills. They will also be developing extra soft skills, which will help them for life, also called 21st century skills. So it's nothing additional. It's just a little adjustment to the topics that they will be learning vocabulary, grammar, and the four skills within. Um, so different content, that's all. Um, lots and lots of thinking skills, learning skills, working skills, and social skills will be developed through the activities. We don't have to teach these skills. We just need to set up and uh, hopefully, um, I'm going to share with you that these skills will be automatically developed when they do some of the uh, tasks that we set them to do. So lots and lots of skills here, social learning, thinking and working. Um, it involves respecting diversity. I mean, a lot of those 21st century skills are like the, um, the global objectives that we're thinking about cooperating, negotiating, leading by influence, um, and helping the world to become a better place. And 
Um, at the same time, we're going. I'm going to show you, I'm going to share with you a lot of different activities that we can get them involved in. And hopefully they'll also be developing um, these skills, uh, global citizenship skills, cooperation, co um, creativity, responsibility, just by taking roles, whether it's online, in the class or face to face, we can always when we ask students to work in groups, if we make sure that they each have a role in the group, they will also be developing these uh, skills of cooperation and responsibility. And they will also be helping us um, to share some of the burden. So they will be doing, they can be doing research, they can be finding materials, they can be um, presenting them, they can be timekeeping, they can be note taking, they can be checking that everybody's filled in what they have to fill in. If you make sure that you delegate everybody in a group a specific responsibility, uh, you won't have to carry the burden of all of this. So your job will be halved and shared with your students. Um, I wonder if you can think of any other roles um, or if you already give roles to your students to help a, during activities that they do in groups or in pairs? Do you already give them roles and responsibilities? You can, yes. Okay, great. Antonella, yes. So you, you always integrate grammar and, and um, all the language that we teach with meaningful content for their lives. That's brilliant. So um, no panic there then. Okay, if we move on. So again, for those of you who might be asking, how do I do that? Where do I start? Um, well, with the knowledge, we need to think, what do my students need to know about the topic? We need to kind of narrow it down. Where is this information going to come from? Is it going to come from a book? Is it going to come from the internet? Is it going to come from YouTube or um, perhaps a non-governmental organization like UNESCO? We need to think um, about the attitudes that we want to, to um, develop in them. How can I help them explore their own attitudes? How can I expose them to the attitudes of others again um, on the internet or talking with each other or maybe even talking to other students in other countries. Can I do that? How can I do that? Um, and this really comes down to the third stage um, or the third pillar. What opportunities can I give them for taking action, um, for acting um, if they are motivated to do so to make the world around them better, fairer, more sustainable? So um, one project that I could suggest just arising from if you do any of the activities that we've just been doing together now with your students, um, one project we could give them um, early on in their global citizenship education, we could ask them to complete maybe a KWL chart or an ABC brainstorming chart. We'll have a look at what those are for those of you unfamiliar with what either of these um, charts, graphic organizers are. Get them to discuss in groups um, and complete a chart uh, about Gen Z vloggers, activists or influencers that they may have heard about or read about or follow on YouTube. Um, ask them to choose one who they think has made a difference to the world in a positive way through one of the goals of Agenda 2030. Ask them to research um, for homework as a project, give them time to do that, to prepare a vlog about who this influencer is, what they have done, and they could then post this vlog online. Um, an ideal platform for this which some of you, maybe many of you are familiar with is Flipgrid. So they can um, 
they can share documents, they can put them online, um, they can share videos online, they can take videos of themselves speaking about this uh, model vlogger that they follow or have heard about or have read about. They can put it up on Flipgrid and they can share it with other people in their class or in their school. Perhaps they can find a way to share it with their community and maybe even with other teenagers in other countries. Maybe other schools in other countries are also doing similar projects and they could share um, about, let's say, a local activist like uh, Luca um, with other schools in other countries. Flipgrid, okay, these are the, 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 the KWL chart and the ABC brainstorming chart. These are what we could give them to, to help them organize and think about and brainstorm um, what they know. As you can see here on the left, the KWL chart, what they know about this person, what they want to know about this person, and what they have learned about this person. So it helps them with their research. Um, or alternatively, they could use this very simple but very, very effective uh, graphic organizer, the letters of the alphabet, and just get them during their research to note down different words associated with what this vlogger does or um, who they are, where they live, and they could make notes under the different uh, letters. So uh, maybe names, places, actions, beginning with A, B, C. Uh, it's just a different way of helping them to organize their notes and make them less ordinary, less academic and uh, then they can get back in their group um, and share their results on Flipgrid. Uh, for those who are, are not familiar with Flipgrid, uh, you can get students putting things up on Flipgrid. You can just keep it closed for the class. You can make it non-editable by others or editable by others. So you can get other students maybe commenting, maybe liking, maybe recording themselves saying whether they liked it or they didn't like it, or what it made them think of. So um, there's a lot of things that students can add, peers can add to their friends' projects. Um, and it could be shared with other classes, it can be shared with other schools in other countries um, if we think it's, it's interesting. So it's a great platform. Um, also, I don't know if anyone, any of you already have an e-twinning project with a school in another country, anybody? Um, do any, any of you have an e-twinning link with another school in another country? Yes, absolutely, Giovanna. They students become actors of their own learning. So, if you've not heard about e-twinning, again, it's up to your school whether they think this is a good idea. Yes, Daniela, um, Rana, Cinzia. Yep. So, some of you have heard about it. Some of you haven't. Some of you might already have got a link going with another school in another country. So. Um, again, we, we can use Flipgrid where students put their projects up and then share them with another school. Um, alternatively, if you don't want to go into something, you know, as big and serious as e-twinning, they can share via Zoom or Skype or Microsoft Teams. But yeah, it makes it they become agents of their own learning and they also realize that they have something to say and share. They learn from each other. And uh, for English language teaching, one of the, the biggest benefits is they have to speak English. Um, they can't speak their mother tongue as they can get away with sometimes in class. But when they're speaking to kids 
in, uh, via Skype or Zoom or Microsoft Teams or even on Flipgrid, they have to do it in English. So it's a great um, hand in hand uh, activity. So, and that brings us also back to Gateway to Success. So for those people say, where am I going to find materials for projects? Where am I going to find um, stuff to, to enhance students' understanding and uh, attitudes and activities? We've got a lot of material on uh, this course book of ours. So this comes straight out of Gateway to Success B1 level, although it starts at A1 probably starts right at the very beginning and it runs throughout all the levels. Um, the, the, this idea about uh, Agenda 2030 and one of the uh, activities is starts off exactly as we did today by sharing the 17 goals, by sharing the five P's, which um, are the the skills for sustainable development and we ask students um, to as they would with any other infographic to work out which infographic lists the goals which groups the goals under general targets called the five p's people prosperity peace partnership and the last one planet yep What's the key message that is present in both and what does it suggest about the present trend? So um, a great introduction. And um, one of the um, awareness raising activities at a two level um, of Gateway to Success introduces this idea of getting students thinking about what is active citizenship. And it introduces this idea of, OK, there's me self um self-centered as many kids are uh until a certain age self and getting them to examine this idea of self-concept self-knowledge self-esteem and then moving them towards the social self and how they are already or will even more start interacting with their community so this is starting the journey towards working with communities, partnership, cooperation, and the materials already. There's your topic. You've got your grammar, your vocabulary, your four skills. They'll all be there. The topic is going to be starting the journey towards global citizenship. So, um, again, a follow up activity. Um, this is from the B1 level, again, gets them looking at the 17 goals uh, grouped according to the, the five concepts of people, planet, prosperity, peace and partnership, asks them to start thinking about um, which of them are suitable for young people's action. Um, and uh, Number two, ask them, is there a goal where you have already taken action? Um, so I'm going to throw this out now to, to you, teachers. Um, have you taken part? Have you encouraged your students to take part in any projects so far? Uh, in any of these topic areas? Has anyone actually had their students working on projects, working towards peace, partnership, saving the planet, saving people on the planet? Anyone? Great. Someone's already setting up a meeting with another school. Um, Carla there wanting to share ideas for school projects. Lovely. That's how it all starts locally and then it can move out globally okay francesca says you've been working on climate change airoldi um, rosanna you've been working on saving the planet go green rana great 
fundraising ideas lovely so many of you may already have have started projects so this is an opportunity to get students thinking about um, some of the projects they've done and linking it with the the sustainable goals maybe they didn't realize when they were doing a project maybe they thought it was just schoolwork and they didn't think that they might be having an impact and they might think wow maybe we 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 are working towards agenda 2030 we've already started which is great um then again with this thinking about self project two again this isn't um necessarily in the course book part of it is the symbols in the bottom line here are from gateway to success a2 level the others are just um icons that i've put in which you can share with your students to get them thinking about communities that they already belong to or could belong to so we've got national football teams international football teams school football teams local football teams orchestras perhaps book clubs xbox communities um maybe they're members of a hiking club um maybe they are um a, a member of um an online platform called discord where different groups of people young people get together and, and um, discuss all kinds of topics any topic at all they can get into people also similarly interested in that topic on discord or model united nations a lot of schools um, perhaps have some of their high school classes um, joining in the mun um, after school activity i remember my daughter at school um she never used to speak until she joined model united nations she never spoke to any adults at all she spoke a lot to her own peers but she never spoke to adults or teachers and then she joined model united nations at school as an after school activity and suddenly my daughter became such a speaker and she ended up being becoming the chair of the Turkish uh, Model United Nations group from her school and uh, became very vociferous uh, and very loud. So again, these icons are, are going to get students thinking about, okay, I am part of a community. These are the different communities. Even a football team that I follow is a community. Um, even the group of people that I play Xbox games with are a community. Um, the after school club that I'm a member of might be a community. Um, and then getting them to think also about some of these in the, in the bottom line from the book, we've got other bigger global um, communities which they may uh, think about joining or may already have done something about. I remember um, we bought for my son, one of uh, Christmas, I think one year we bought him. Um, we donated to the World Wildlife um, Organization and he, we bought him, um, what was it? What do you call it? Like a voucher where he adopted um, a panda. Um, so the money went towards helping the the conservation and the the healthy life and prosperity of a panda somewhere in the world and he he was very proud to have received that so these are things also um that that students may have had may have had a present somebody may have bought them a a voucher a birthday voucher a christmas voucher and they may have saved an animal somewhere in the world and they didn't realize that they'd had this impact so getting them thinking about that um then um again a2 level gateway to success um gets them thinking about and discussing speaking about which groups they belong to family school world at large sports teams etc what we what we were talking about on the previous slide gets them then thinking about what benefits they get um 
from being a member of these communities. Uh, section three, four and five are about rules which which govern groups. And this is almost a, a separate a, a separate subject. And this could be um, you could work, get them working on a project separately. So concept of community could be a little mini project rules and rules which govern these communities, rules at school, um, how you can change rules. Um, this could be another mini project. And then from uh, number two onwards, they, they get a definition of what an active citizen is. And number three gets them thinking about which of the following actions might be considered responsible behavior, or active citizenship, respect for rules, respect for regulations, that brings in active citizenship and rules, brings it all together. So you've got, in a sense, they're almost three little mini projects which would then come together um, and get your students, giving them the knowledge about communities around them, self-knowledge, and also getting them to think about what they do every day um, and what happens at school and perhaps what they could do in order to, to become active. Um, again, as part of their reading, um, again, in uh, A2 level, their reading topic is the European Youth Parliament. So they probably didn't have never even heard of it, many of them. So um, they're introduced to the European Youth Parliament through this reading passage. And then the follow up activity, if I actually blow up this second one, I can make it larger so you can all read it. Um, they've got the usual fill in the blanks. They've got a little bit of instead of comprehension questions, they've got group discussion, group debate about um, the content of the reading passage. And again, it's all about what young people are doing, can become a part of if they join the European Parliament. Um, I've got a big red arrow here pointing at um, the fourth point of their debate, which is discuss the steps for a possible project for the European Youth Forum. So setting, setting the goals right at the beginning at A2 level and getting them thinking about what they might be able to do if they were to um, want to uh, create uh, a project which they would then share at the European Youth Forum. Uh, and the following activity gets them to, to start thinking about and outline the topic um, and think about what they would need to learn before they could possibly uh, present it to the European Youth Forum. So it's, again, raising awareness of how much power um, they could have in changing the world to make it a better place. Again, as part of their journey of self-discovery, um, another unit has them reading about and also listening to and watching a video about social media versus reality. Um, it's a nice little video. They're given the link here. They go directly into the link. Um, you would treat it like any video um, and listening uh, activity. But while they are reading and while they are watching the video, they are thinking about the following questions. The social networks mentioned, um, real identity versus social identity and how the two might be different. Um, as it says at the bottom here in this uh, little article or, or extract from it, a lot of people have a life in Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok or Facebook as they have a life in Italy, Australia and Canada. So again, it's, it's uh, getting them thinking about what am I a part of? Um, am I the same person? Am I a different person in these different roles? And 
also getting them thinking about and talking about the dangers um, of fake information. Um, you know, how, how honest is it? Um, and, and getting them to use their critical thinking skills here. Moving on faster, um, again, more exercises, getting them to think about how social media could be used to develop the social self in a good way, become an active member of the community. They're given some suggestions here and, and, and get thinking about what they could do. So it's all raising their knowledge. It's perhaps modifying their attitude, but we also need action. So so far, we've looked at some mini projects and full scale projects, which they could do on personal and social identity. Um, we've also looked at a project they could work on for communities they belong to or could belong to. And there are another five that I'm going to whiz through in the next five minutes very quickly. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to go back and watch this later on. Um, or um, perhaps you already have access to um, success, um, and so they will all be in there. Although there are some additions from me. Uh, responsible Action at Home Project. Um, again, this appears in a lot of course books nowadays, but what is really nice, I think, is actually getting them to do more than just talk about it, the action part, um, remember. Um, so this is my suggestion, my addition for any teachers looking for a project, actually getting their students doing more than thinking and talking about um, responsibility at home. Um, this is an idea. Uh, get them to decide in groups uh, about something they're going to give up doing or um, decide on an action that they're going to take at home for one week. Uh, the group decides which one they're going to do all together. Each person goes home um, or stays at home <laughs> as they are already and uh, they carry out the project they've decided um, on some kind of action at home. They record on a chart like this their, their action, the progress, the feelings and the effect. Um, they can take little photos on their mobile phones. Um, they can make little video clips. They can record little podcasts. They can put it up on Flipgrid again to share with everybody or whatever platform you use. After a week, uh, discuss with the group. Each individual in the group discusses how it went, what they learned from it, and then present their results with the rest of the class and possibly other schools, other classes, and also discuss perhaps what they could do as a follow-up project. And the students will come up with lots of ideas if we give them the opportunity to. Project four, um, again, Gateway to Success at A2 level looks at tiny homes, um, something that's very, very popular now, um, is something that I am crazy about on YouTube. I'm always watching people's tiny homes because each one is so different. Um, and there are three possible little mini projects that students can do here. And these little mini mini projects can develop into bigger projects. Um, we've got a debating activity here. Um, watch the video about minimalism and downsizing. Take notes and discuss. Um, another activity is a writing activity. Imagine you live in a tiny house, write a description. Um, and then we've got a citizenship task. Um, they're dotted throughout the whole unit and different little tasks, which can become uh, little mini projects. So, for example, here um, you want to let other teenagers know what they can do at home to protect the environment. Prepare a leaflet. Um, to give them ideas how to do this. So again, in groups, they can um, plan how they might uh, downsize at home to protect their environment, um, put it together in a leaflet. Um, so, but taking it beyond just making a leaflet um, 
and including all the ideas they've got from the video, perhaps the, the writing activity, um, we can take this one step further and get them to swap leaflets and try out uh, another group's suggestions and again report how it went using a chart, using little video clips, posting it on Flipgrid. Perhaps, um, you know, they can use the, go through the, the clothes you have in your wardrobe and have a keep box and a donate box and an upcycle box and a throwaway box um, and get them to record it and, and actually turn it into more than just a writing or a debating activity and make it something they do, action, and then share and discuss how it went. Project five um, works on is the, the topic is sport, but um, I, I, this is the B1 level, but very nice looking at how uh, sport saved this man, Iron Man, from Iron Bars to Iron Man. Sport saved him when he was in prison. He had nothing else to do, so he did a lot of sport. And then um, the speaking activity is find information online about another athlete who claims that sport saved him or her from a life of crime. And again, this is the ideal material to make it into a mini project. The citizenship task in that unit is um, find out about an athlete or a Paralympic athlete who is a positive role model find out about a movie about a sport that has a positive message and give a short presentation to the class. Again, there's another mini project. So you've got two mini projects there which can be connected into a larger project. So students will be doing more than just speaking, more than just reading. They'll actually be sharing what they found out and possibly doing. So, um, here we have a writing activity, a guided speaking activity, again, using a video about the benefits of sport, different kinds of sport. And this is, again, my addition. Why not get them in groups to design a week or in pairs, design a week's program, a physical activity at home for one of your friends, exchange programs, try out the program you've been given, keep track of your progress each day, report the results online, i.e. on Flipgrid or another platform, and discuss whether this could also be done at school. So maybe more or different uh, activities than are already provided. This is um, part of the guided speaking here. What sports or fitness activities can young people in your area or school have access to? And perhaps they're going to come up with something completely different and completely new and completely doable, and especially in lockdown um, a lot of us are not doing as much physical activity as we would like to be. So this is going to ask students to be more creative about what can we do at home if we don't have a treadmill, if we don't have uh, fantastic equipment because we live in an apartment. Um, what can we do? So they're going to come up with the solutions. They're going to track the progress um, and share the results online. Project six. Um, again, um, they've got reading, they've got debating, they've got a video to watch about the dangers of mass tourism, um, some of the, the, the disadvantages of tourism, like overcrowding, pollution, bad behavior, rising prices. And again, this is ideal for a project. So uh, for those of you who want um, get them to um, investigate what happens in the. This is this is in Italy. I don't know which part of Italy. You probably recognise it um, better than I did. Um, yes, real tasks are motivating, Giovanna. Once it it gets out of the course book. Okay, Marina, that is a place in the photo where I studied. Amalfi, okay. Yeah, I've heard of that. So it's obviously a great tourist resort in Italy. And get them researching, finding out what happens when the tourists hit Amalfi, which they will again, I'm sure. 
what are the downsides what are the upsides um lovely and then a little bit later on they've got a writing task here that says um use your imagination and start your own travel vlog imagine uh, a trip that you made use the past simple there's your there's your grammar but um my suggestion is why not get them to to get into google earth and get them to go and uh visit a country on google earth or and then a city maybe a village um, and all the things that it suggests here could be done on Google Earth. So they don't have to imagine they can if they can, if they want, or they can go into Google Earth, which is a wonderful free resource um, and get them to to investigate and then report it. Um, and how are they going to report it here? They've got a citizenship task of evaluating travel adverts um, and why they're good, why they're bad. <clears throat> they're asked to discuss top five things a travel advert must include. So once they've discovered or created uh, this travel blog, they can then turn it into um, a travel advert and uh, they can share it online. And Project 7, again, uh, I think this is the last of our projects and time is definitely uh, ending. So food and healthy eating again from, from uh, Gateway to Success, a citizenship task, getting them thinking about globally um, the Food and Agriculture Organization. I found this online, maybe they will too, that World Food Day was celebrated in Rome a couple of years ago get them to find out about that um, they're asked to create a poster about world food day and a little bit further on in the unit they're asked to uh, write a letter to a headmaster um, about the school cafeteria <clears throat> before they do that i would suggest you encourage your students to actually ask for a menu from their own school cafeteria have a look at it, evaluate it, discuss it, and then really write a letter to the headmaster suggesting healthier food, healthier options. So they can really take this off the page and make it into uh, real action. So throughout all of those projects, if you want to make it a little bit you know, get the students more um, on track, make sure they do it, make sure they think about it. Um, you can have them writing down their progress on this little worksheet here, 71A. Um, what did they do? What did they not do? Um, hand it in to you, regularly share it with you, and you can make comments to them, they can make comments to you. So you've got a little dialogue going on. How's it going? How are you doing? Um, they can also talk to each other. And then on the right, we've got a little worksheet where we can assess the projects they've done. Um, and they can also assess the projects they've done. And also how they worked as a group, uh, the planning, the organizing, and the text, the task objectives, whether they met them or not. So you can take this one step further and include it as part of their overall assessment. And finally, um, for those who take projects very, very seriously, we've got a very little useful checklist here to make sure that uh, the students are gaining knowledge and understanding. They are dealing with a challenging problem or question, which uh, will keep them going, to make sure that they are involved in asking questions more and more, to make sure that the, the project is authentic and um, has a real world context and perhaps a real world impact to make sure that the students have a voice and choice throughout the project they decide what they're going to do how they do it maybe what instruments they're going to use to make sure that they are reflecting maybe like using the forms on the previous slide i showed you um, make sure that there is some kind of opportunity for peer assessment, tutor assessment halfway through and 
opportunity for revision, and finally, make sh making sure that it becomes public so that the work that they've done doesn't go to waste, it's shared with the class, with other classes, with the school, and perhaps with other schools as well. So, um, we've got our course book, which is guiding us all the way through that, with a little bit of addition, if we want, from us. UNESCO, um, like eTwinning, gets classes and schools internationally working together, as does pblworks.org. There are lots of other places where we can get inspiration from. Um, I hope uh, that gives you um, lots of inspiration for the future and lots of support um, through your course book. So thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Um, I think we have another presentation coming on after, after this one. So not much time for questions, but if there are any questions, if we have one, one more minute um, for any urgent questions that you want to ask, please go ahead. Yeah, we do, have, we, we do have about one minute, but not more for questions, um, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, something I noticed, uh, there was quite a few good comments. I thought one of them was that tomorrow is Earth Day. So it might be a good a good place to start. Um, Absolutely. Uh, and while we're waiting for any final questions, uh, just remember the attestati will be sent out um, in the next day or two. Um, you can also find them on the website, uh, mandatorieducation.it uh, slash attestati. I'd like to remind everyone also that um, we'll be doing our final um, webinar with Russell Stannard, who will be wrapping everything up uh, on the 5th of May, which is in two weeks' time, on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Uh, let me see if there are any final questions that I think we need to get answered. No, uh, everyone's thanking you. So, yeah, I'll thank you too, Teresa. That was wonderful, and I look forward to uh, you. seeing you here in Italy, uh, hopefully in the fall. I hope so. I yep. hope so. I hope so. Looking forward okay. to it very much. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon, and I'll see you in two weeks' time. Thanks, Thanks again, everyone. Teresa. Take care. Bye-bye. Ciao. Ciao.